This video supports the first lesson for the week of May 25th in the BCPS Secondary Reading Curriculum. The title of this lesson is Read to Get the Gist. I'm Nancy Perkins, a resource teacher in both the offices of Secondary ELA and Title I. This week, you will be working on getting the gist of the text that you read. Do you know what it means to get the gist? Well, the gist is the most important information in a text stated in a short, concise, but accurate way. Sounds similar to other work that we've been doing to determine the most important information, doesn't it? Well, we will just have a slightly different method for doing it this week. Before we get started with working on figuring out the gist, let's do some work to prepare for the reading. Take a look at this picture. What message do you think this picture is sending to you? Did you think that maybe it has something to do with reading or books giving you power or knowledge? That idea fits with the text that we will be reading for this lesson. The article we're reading is titled, 10 Benefits of Reading, Why You Should Read Every Day. But before we dig into the article, let's have a little fun with some of the words that you will encounter when you read this text. One word in the text is tension. Take a look at the three pictures that I show you and decide which person is feeling tension. Choice A, choice B, or choice C. Did you pick C? This woman definitely looks like she's feeling some stress or strain, and that is tension. The next word is boost. Look at these pictures and decide which person is getting a boost. Choice A, choice B, or choice C. Getting a boost means that something is being lifted or pushed up or helped up in some way. Choice A literally shows a baby being lifted or pushed up, so that baby is getting a boost. But in choice B, one person seems to be getting help from another person on the job, so we might think that one person's skills or knowledge base is getting a boost from the other person. And in choice C, it looks like a congratulatory handshake of some kind is being given. So we might be able to say that one person's self-esteem or mood is getting a boost. I kind of tricked you with that one. All three of the pictures could be showing getting a boost. How about the word stabilize? Which picture would be a good illustration for the word stabilize? Choice A or choice B? I think there's definitely a correct answer for this one, and that's choice B. Stabilize means to hold steady or level. You can definitely see that with how steady the balls are balanced in choice B. In choice A, the seagull looks like he's about to lose his balance, so he is not stabilized. The next word is immerse. Which person seems to be immersed in something? Choice A choice B or choice C? Well, again, you could actually make an argument that all three show someone immersed in something. To immerse means to plunge, drown, or cover yourself in something. In choice A, the person is immersed in snow. In choice B, the person is immersed in water. And in choice C, we could say that the person is immersed in a good book. Last one. Which picture shows a scene of tranquility? Choice A or choice B? Tranquility is a state of peace and calmness. It certainly looks like choice B more accurately shows tranquility. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that vocabulary review. Now let's get to reading the text to get the gist. To do this, good readers determine the most important information contained in a text, and then they can write that information in what are called gist statements. Let's get ready to practice these skills. Have in front of you 
the article titled 10 Benefits of Reading, Why You Should Read Every Day, and your copy of the GIST thinking chart for this article. Now follow along with this segment to hear a model of reading the first section of the article. This is the article that we'll be reading for this lesson. It's titled 10 Benefits of Reading, Why You Should Read Every Day. Reading is to the mind what exercise is to the body. I know that the first thing I want to do is read through the article and just engage with the information and pay attention to my thinking. I'm going to pay attention to any questions or thoughts or comments or reactions that I have as I'm going. I have already done this for the first half of the article, so follow along with me now as I read that first half of the article to you and just share with you some of the thinking that I was doing. When was the last time you read a book or magazine article? And right away I highlighted that line because that made me think, well, we've been reading a lot of good articles lately. Do your daily reading habits center around tweets, social media updates, or the directions on your oatmeal packet? If you're one of many people who don't make a habit of reading regularly, you might be missing out. Reading has a number of benefits. A few of them are listed below. Number one, brain activity. Studies have shown that keeping your brain active can possibly prevent certain diseases like dementia because keeping your brain active stops it from losing power. Just like any other muscle in the body, the brain needs exercise to keep it strong and healthy. And I highlighted that line because I was thinking, yes, that makes sense. The brain is a muscle, so it does make sense that you need to exercise it to keep it strong and healthy. Number two, stress reduction. No matter how much stress you have in your daily life, it all just slips away when you lose yourself in a great story or article. A well-written novel can take you to other times and places, while an interesting article will distract you and keep you in the present moment, letting tension drain away and allowing you to relax. And I highlighted that line about reading articles because I was thinking that, yes, I definitely do that. I like to just grab my phone and scroll through and read some articles whenever I need a little break. It's just relaxing for me. Number three, knowledge. Everything you read fills your head with new bits of information and you never know when it might come in handy. The more knowledge you have, the better you are able to tackle any challenge you'll ever face. Additionally, here's a thought to keep in mind. Even if you were to lose everything else in your life, your knowledge can never be taken away from you. And I like that, so I highlighted that and I just said I really like that idea that my knowledge can never be taken away. I will always have my knowledge to fall back on. Number four, vocabulary expansion. This goes with the idea of gaining knowledge. The more you read, the more words you come across, and some of them may make their way into your everyday vocabulary. Having a good vocabulary is of great help in any job. Knowing that you can speak to your teachers or bosses with confidence can be a big boost to your self-esteem. Reading books is also important for learning new words in different languages. And I highlighted the line about good vocabulary being a help in any job because I was thinking, oh, definitely, for sure, very true. Having the words to express yourself well and to communicate effectively with your bosses or with people is a great benefit in any job. Okay, that was the first four items on this list. If you scroll down, you see there are 10. So your job is to now read the, the last six, read the information and capture your thinking. And then we'll go on and take a look at the GIST thinking chart and talk about how are we gonna take this information and write GIST statements for it. Now, follow along with this segment to see an example of how to complete the GIST thinking chart. Here is a GIST thinking chart that we'll be completing with the information from the article that we just read. If you take a look at it, it's just a simple two column chart. Before we take a look at the first column, which is where we'll be writing our GIST statements, 
take a look at the second column, which is your thinking column, and this is the column that we seem to have in all of our charts, where you're just going to capture some of those thoughts that you had while you were reading. So if you can see, I've already filled in the thinking column for the things that I was thinking while I read the first four sections. So your job in this column is just going to be go back and what were some of the thoughts that you had while you were reading and write them here. Okay, so my suggestion always is just do that first. Now, for the gist statements, we need to do a little bit of work back on the article. So I'm going to go back to the article. And when we want to capture the gist, what we're thinking about is what was really the most important information that was shared in the different sections. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go back through the sections and we're just going to highlight or underline what we think were the most important words and phrases in those particular sections. Then we'll take those words and phrases and combine them into a well-written sentence that is going to give us the gist or the most important part of these sections. So if we take a look at brain activity, I went back through and I was thinking that with brain activity, what this was really telling us was the most important thing is that reading can possibly prevent certain diseases because keeping your brain active stops it from losing power. So then I took that information and I went to the brain activity section on the GIST chart and I just combined those ideas and I said keeping your brain active keeps it from losing power and can possibly prevent diseases. Again, that's like the GIST, the most important part of that section. If we look at the stress reduction section, I thought what is this telling me about stress reduction? So I highlighted when you lose yourself in a great story or article, and okay, well, what happens when you lose yourself? Tension can drain away and you can relax. So I highlighted those words and phrases. And then if I look back at the GIST chart under stress reduction, I put that together. When you lose yourself in a great story or article, tension drains away and you relax. Notice that I had to add a couple of my own words there to make it a complete sentence, a complete thought. Okay, in the knowledge section, I highlighted everything you read, what about it? it? Gives you information. The more knowledge you have, the better. You can tackle any challenge. I felt like they were the most important ideas. On my GIST chart for knowledge, everything you read gives you information. The more knowledge you have, the better you can tackle challenges. Notice that ended up being two sentences, but it's still two very concise sentences that give us that most important bit of information. Then vocabulary expansion. Let's see, what did I highlight there? The more you read, the more words you come across. And that's vocabulary, of course. It's a great help in any job, helps you to speak with confidence, can boost your self-esteem. Again, that's what I decided was the most important part. And in the gist section, grow your vocabulary because the more you read, the more words you come across. Vocabulary is a great help in any job. And if you speak with confidence, it boosts your self-esteem. Okay, so again, notice that I couldn't just smush all the words together that I highlighted. I had to add in a couple different words and a couple different phrases to make it a complete thought and well-written sentences. And again, it came out to two sentences, but that's okay. I still have the gist. I still have the most important stuff. Okay, so your job, go back through the parts of the article that you read and just go into the different sections and highlight what do you think are the most important ideas, the most important words and phrases, and then see what you can do to combine those into a complete thought for your GIST statements. Okay, and that's how you complete the GIST thinking chart. When you're finished, submit it to your teacher. Now, anytime you read a text, Remember to be trying to get the gist of the information.